Hey guys, what's up? Nature from Protoculture. Welcome back to Sonic Academy for another tech tip series. We're going to be doing a bunch of tech tips in this, but it's also serving as a sort of top 10 list of reasons why I think you should go and check out Bitwig Studio in 2022. I'm using Bitwig 4.3.4 for this video. It's the latest version as of recording. Now, if you've watched any of my Sonic Academy videos previously to date, you'll know that I'm a massive Cubase head. I have been for years. I've used many DAWs in my lifetime. I started off with Cakewalk and Voyetra Pro way back in the day. Used Logic for ages until they sold out to Apple. And then I moved on to Cubase for almost 20 years. I believe I've been using it for about 19 years now. So I know it very well. And then recently I decided to try out Bitwig. I got sent a copy from the guys at Bitwig and absolutely fell in love with the software. It's impressed me to no end. I've been using this for the last year almost uh, pretty religiously for pretty much everything that I do in the studio right now. Uh, so I want to dive in and show you some of my favorite features and then in doing so show you some pretty cool tips and tricks that you can do around each of these features as well. So without further ado let's get into the first video. I'll catch you then. Cheers. So we're going to talk about a new feature in Bitwig and this is a pretty exciting one, um, especially further down the line as this becomes more implemented uh, with more plugins coming on board. But that's the addition of the clap format or the clap plugin format inside of uh, Bitwig. Now this was developed by Bitwig in conjunction with Huhi and it's a open plugin format that more and more developers are expected to come on board with. Currently there are a number of synths available. Uh, you can grab Surge uh, VST for free. Uh, it has full clap functionality, polyphonic modulation, which you can take a look at right now, which is a really great sounding synth as well. Now Clap has a, a number of advantages, uh, both for developers, but also for the user, um, namely a number of things like improved multi-core compatibility. It's more um, optimized to run on multi-core processes now. There's faster load times, a number of under the hood things, uh, but more importantly, there's the MIDI 2.0 spec and MPE compatibility, and then also polyphonic modulation, which uh, I believe only Bitwig will do right now uh, with some of these Clap plugins. So most of you are familiar with Diva. We're going to bring that up. Uh, so Clap is great for Diva because it is a CPU hog. So having it optimized for multi-core or more optimized is fantastic news. Uh, but also it's an analog synth and it's not a modulation powerhouse like um, some more modern synthesizers out there. Uh, so having the additional modulation is really nice, but even nicer now that you can do this polyphonically. And I'll show you how this works. I've got a single saw wave here. And we're going to modulate the cutoff. So we're going to add a bit of randomness to the cutoff here. So we'll just open up the modulation pane here. We'll grab our random mod. And we'll assign this. I'm first just going to disable the poly just to show you how this works. We'll go uh, bipolar. So up and down from the cutoff. Just select the cutoff here. And now we can apply this to the cutoff. So we've got some SNH modulation going on there. We may switch this over to the smoothed version. So we've got some random modulation on the filter now. Uh, but watch what happens when I play additional notes in here. You can hear the filters moving the same for all of the voices. Uh, and this is indicated by this waveform that you can see there. Uh, you're going to see the difference now when we switch over to polyphonic. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we'll change this to note. So it's going to reset this generator every time we play a note. But if you leave this in mono, you'll see now it resets. Resets again. And again. And they're all still playing the same modulation. But when we switch this over to polyphonic now, you'll hear the amazing results that you get with this, um, because now each voice of Diva has its own modulation source here when we play additional notes. And let's take a listen to this as soon as we play a chord in. We 
really gives this uh, amazingly organic uh, feeling to your modulation, especially when used in quite small amounts as well. You can really breathe a lot of life into this already great sounding synth. Uh, we'll bring up a second oscillator here. Let's just leave the detune at zero here, but we'll just select that. We can say duplicate this. Let's maybe just speed this up a little bit and we'll bring this down slightly and just assign a small amount of this to the oscillator to detune. Now remember, each voice that we play is going to be detuned differently to the rest. So that's the detuning occurring there. We'll play a couple of notes in here. Really, really exciting what you can do. And then, of course, you can even cross-modulate all this stuff. Uh, we could say use this one in polyphonic mode to go and change voices, the speed of this one, let's say, for example. So we'll randomly alter the speed of the detuning. And just to kind of hear how that translates into something with a bit of effect on it. We'll just add in some reverb and this really kind of comes to life now. And all we're doing is playing Two oscillators with a saw wave. There's nothing else going on here on the plug in front, just some random modulation there. And you can hear how rich you can get that sound when you're using this polyphonic modulation. So that's really great news for uh, clap plugins. Now, I don't have Surge installed, and Diva is not currently MPE compatible, but I do want to show you a little trick here. We'll just use Polysynth that comes in a bit wig. Uh, Another thing that will be available to clap plugins, especially ones that are poly uh, or MPE compatible, we'll just record in a chord here. We'll go with an A minor. So let's just uh, record. We'll do that. Now, what we can do is we can play around with the micro pitch editing in this, and we can do really cool stuff like chord slides, which were previously not possible with uh, with most plugins. Uh, so we'll just come down here to the micro pitch editing, and we'll do a chord slide from an A minor to an F major. Uh, so what we're going to do to do this, or we'll stay. Let's say just these last two sections. Yeah, in the middle, we're going to come into our F. Let's maybe do a slightly slower fade from there. So let's drop our A down to an F. That's our bass note. We can apply curves to these two. Uh, the E, we're going to want to go up to an F here. We can fade that one in as well. And let's just try something interesting. We'll switch these two notes around. So we can go from here up to our C. We're curving for that one. And we'll take our C and drop that to an A. And take a listen to what we have now. Very, very, very cool for, for expressive melodic stuff. And we can take this even further using the MPE compatibility and apply things like timbre and pressure per note. So let's uh, just switch over to the velocity editing and you see under, underneath we'll just use the timbre controls. So let's select a note here, C4, C4 the top one, and we can draw in some automation data just for this note. So let's just, uh, we'll just get some random stuff going on here. And let's take our second note here, maybe we'll take this one slightly differently. Maybe just overlap these a little bit. And let's take this one. And let's just let's apply sort of like a totally different curve to this. And we'll leave the bass note alone at the bottom. Uh, but now all we want to do is just flip back to our polysynth here, and you'll see by default you have this expressions modulation um, uh, module in here. 
Um, you can just add this as well at any given time if it's not here by going to expressions. And we can take the timbre controls that we have now per note and apply that polyphonically to controls that we have here. So let's say, for instance, we'll bring our filter down slightly. We'll use that as a sort of midpoint. And let's assign the timbre to our filter. Take a listen to what we have now. And of course, these can be applied to anything. Uh, so we could change the sound completely, essentially, by, let's say, for instance, changing the shape of the uh, of this, maybe changing the mix of our oscillators, and let's add some sub in there with that and just see what happens. I'm just randomly choosing a little bit of noise as well. Just randomly choosing stuff just to see what happens. And let's go with that again. And this is all being controlled by timbre. Really exciting stuff, and you can do some pretty amazing expressive stuff with the the various different controls that you have on hand for these clap plugins and the Bitwig plugins as far as polyphonic modulation and MPE control is concerned. Great, let's move on to the next video. I'll catch you then. Cheers. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate the support from you guys. If you liked this video, then you know, smash that like button. And if you want to be notified about new content, hit the subscribe and the bell notifications. Peace.